Hey you guys, so I spent, listen to this, two hours trying to figure this thing out. And so this is the blind. Yesterday, if you guys saw the video, you could see that this part was untwined. So I actually re, um, retied it back on and the way I did it was I grabbed this tweezer and I fed it right through here. So I had to do that individually. Hold on, let me double check something really quickly. Sorry you guys, you guys are gonna get a clean, um, clean lens. Sorry. I know, so unprofessional. Okay, here we go. So, I was on a mission. I was on a mission. So yesterday the blinds was a little different. It fed up on top. This one, I thought, okay, I should be able to open it. And I couldn't figure out how to open it. See that? I couldn't figure out how to open it. So what I did, and I know it's super dusty. What I did is I actually forced my way through with the plastic. See that? So I grabbed a, um, I grabbed a razor and I cut through and I cut through over here and then I made this little opening and then I thought what is this material underneath the plastic my dumb butt didn't realize it was actually the blind material see that oh <laughs> and then after I moved it I thought wait a second there's a hinge in there yeah so this was super snug in I grabbed a screwdriver and then I just kind of shimmied it out. So let me beat it out. See that? It's a lot looser now. So if I had actually just taken this thing out, I probably would have been able to do this much smoother. So I fed it through and when I opened it, it popped out. But let me show you this mechanism because I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Don't mind my dirty fingers. So you just open it up using handy dandy screwdriver over here and the way i fed it through whoops the way i fed it through was i put one on the bottom and one on the top so i just kind of estimated it see so i put like one right over here like that oh See, I should have opened it because now it's hard to do. So I just put one over on top and then one over on bottom. Let me see if I can do it over here. Wait, hey, ah! Oh, this bolt went loose, oh no. Okay, hold up. Uh-oh, I think I just screwed myself up. No, oh, never mind, I didn't. Okay, so there are my two strings over here. I know this is so amateurish. So amateurish. And then let's see over here. Over here. And then I put one on up here. Can you guys see? Yeah, maybe. There. One and then one on the bottom like that. And then from what I was seeing online, you see this thing? This thing is kind of free and it goes up and down. So that's why sometimes it locks and sometimes it doesn't. See that little thingy over there? So I think that's supposed to be free, see? So depending on how I move it. Come on, go back up. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to shimmy it. And there's actually a track over here, but I'm just gonna close it up like that. Do that so one's on top one's on bottom and then close it up where'd it go oh no my screw yeah this is a really weird angle because i'm actually bending behind the camera so my face is i'm actually contorting my body just to show this because i don't have an overhead camera oh where'd it go yeah i think that's good Okay, so it'll be like that. And then I just kind of 
shift it in. So after I after I um took this out, then I realized, frick, this part over here can move freely. See that? So if I had just taken that little part out, I wouldn't have had to um saw my way through this thing. Oh. Uh, but live and learn, live and learn. That's what happens when you don't have instructions about how to take this thing out. My thinking was, is I thought maybe this was put in and then the metal was folded over. That was my thinking. That's why I saw my way through. But obviously, I was mistaken. I was definitely mistaken. And then you just pop this thing back in there. And then I'm going to put this thing back up. It's actually, yeah, hold on. See, this is the reason why people won't do this on a live stream. Because <laughs> it actually, it's, it's actually not as easy as I would have liked it to be. Oh, why did I do that? I wanted to show you guys this stuff. Okay. And then I got the blind over there, so I have to push this thing in. But then I also have to adjust this part too. Because this part is sliding on in the back. Total mess. Total mess, I know. Total mess. Hold up. Ah, oh, come on. Ah! Okay, hold up a second. Come on. How come you, how come I, okay, there we go, finally. There we go. So, this is snapped back into place, I think. Let's double check over here. Okay, it's a little loose. And this is just my dumb butt because I took out the plastic over here. See that? But, it does appear... Let me scroll up. It does appear that it does shrink. So I can adjust it, and it stays, and it, let's see, if it, oh, no, come on, yeah, so I'm going to have to fiddle faddle with this thing off stream, because this thing is feeling pretty loose, like I said, my dumb butt went and cracked the plastic, because I didn't think, hey, there's actually a piece over here that retracts, the, I mean, it doesn't look, it does, it looks, like, it, it really isn't flush right now, but when I initially took it down, it was super flush. That I honestly thought it was one piece, but now I know. Now I know. Live and learn. Yep. Healing the blind. <laughs> it was a total mess, though. So you see all the plastic over there? Yeah, that's all the plastic that I just pulled through using this. This. And where's my tweezers? Yeah, this this was an excruciating long screen. This and this. Was it worth it? Uh, we'll see how it is. I'm gonna have to hang this thing back up. I hope it stays somewhat. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see. But then also it has these two clips over here. So I, I think I could be okay. I could be okay, we'll see, we'll see. So let me see how the clips go. Yeah. Is that right? You know, honestly, I don't even know if this is upside down or not. I have no idea. Someone's probably looking at this and thinking, Oh my lordy. Don't make a repair stream. Oh my lordy. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the best way for me to figure out which side is which would be following the paint stream. So was there paint on this side? Yeah. Is it actually the same direction? Let's see. Okay. I think this is the same... I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter on the direction. this way okay maybe it was the other way 
Oh, or maybe I'm fiddle faddling with it. I know this is a painful stream. I really need an overhead camera. That's what I need. Hold on. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that and see how that is. And then I'm going to put this side on. And then hang it up and then see where I go from here. Oh my goodness, I think I'm missing one piece. Maybe it fell some, somewhere, sometime. Yeah, I think I'm missing a piece. Hold up. So I'm supposed to, okay, here, see? So I'm supposed to put the plastic up on top and then go about it that way. And, yeah, maybe it's not perfect, but you know what? It works, and that's all that matters. So, I think I might have repaired it. We'll see. Let's see? So, the good thing is, is that, okay, let me retract out, you guys. See the two strings? If I pull it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have to straighten it. But if I pull it, oh, uh, where's one string and where's two string? Okay. Oh, I pulled the thing out. Oh no. I'm gonna have to clamp this thing better. Uh, how did I clamp this thing wrong? Okay, let me go back to the drawing board. Yeah, I think I screwed up a little because I don't have the plastic bit over here. I don't have the plastic bit. Yeah, this is right to repair blinds. And as you can tell, I'm obviously unauthorized to do this kind of repair. I don't I'm just a person who was like, I'm going to save my bl I'm going to save the blind. And see how it goes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to fiddle faddle with you guys. This is going to be pretty pretty um something on my end and like i said because i'm sitting behind the camera and i got the camera right in front of me it's kind of problematic but i would highly recommend don't bring don't break the plastic part because breaking the plastic part you'll end up with a situation where it doesn't really have anything to grip behind and that's completely my fault um i'm kind of wondering if i can macgyver it in a sense so you see, so you see there was like usually a piece of plastic over there, right there, but then little me broke it off. Actually, wait a second. See that little piece of plastic? I wonder if I can scoot it forward and do it with that. Okay, let's see again. My repairs are probably why I'm at 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> okay, let's see. I know, I'm trying to salvage this little crappy beast. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, I don't think I can. Yeah, I think I broke the plastic too much. They don't really have uh, repair manuals about how to fix this stuff, you know? that I'm trying to shimmy the plastic in front and this is actually really old plastic too come on and I gotta remove this part too I need an overhead cam come on get out there see focus okay so I want to move this plastic there we go in behind here see I don't think that's really gonna do very good but hell 
better than nothing. Okay. There we go. See that? See how it's behind there? Maybe this will do better. See, so I put it behind the broken plastic. And then from here, I'll tighten. And then, yeah, let's see how this works now. I don't want this shooting thing out. Okay. You know what, actually? Okay, here. here. You guys can see maybe from over. Let me see. Is this too zoomed in? Oh, this is too zoomed in. Okay. Okay. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys want to know something? I just lost the string. Oh, I lost the string. <laughs> oh, I got to feed the string back through here. Yeah, I let this go all the way down and I think I might have shuffled something. I got to I got to take it apart again. Arg! Arg! Grr. I had it earlier. Yeah, but this is why sometimes like when I when I do stuff, I don't want to open it back up again because if I open it up, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to have a total fail. But that's okay. That's okay. Actually, you know what? Okay. That was really dumb. I had it facing outwards and I should have faced it downwards. Yep. I have gloves by the way, but I don't feel like putting them on. Come on. There we go. So, let's see here. I have one string over here. See, so I lost one string over here. And my thinking is, oh, I think I'm supposed to... I don't know what the hell happened here. I think someone who shall remain unnamed broke the cord and then they did this weird knot thingy or see that i don't know what what this is like this is very strange to me see this this looks like a total mess but someone tried to make this diy knot and i'm gonna just add on to the diy knot because yeah okay so let me go back here with pop this thing back out so there's these two little clips here i didn't know that there were clips here i really didn't know it wasn't until i opened this part out i realized that there were two clips and that i'm not liking that at all but i'm thinking that if i where'd the, where'd the other string go string Suck. This is gonna suck because I have to restring this back in then. So I let's say this might take a while. No. Um the paper's not ripping, it's actually the cloth. Um, this is actually, I don't think this is paper, I think this is some kind of thing, but, oh, come on here, yeah, so this part, I have to snake it through, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna snake it through, and then put it back in the mechanism, and then tie it onto that, uh, that little bead thingy with Jimmy, and that way hopefully it doesn't fall through, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. See how old this plastic is? It's just snapping off. I would have saved a bunch, a bunch of time. And, and if I just was able to take this off earlier. But, like I said, I didn't really see any instructions about how to fix this stuff. This one in particular. I found the lat ones, but this kind of one, uh, people on YouTube, 
at least what I could find, I didn't find any of this stuff. Not any of the, okay, make sure you remove this part or snake it through. And I think you're going to understand why it's not really shown. It's kind of, it. I don't want to say it's like really that big pain on the ass, but for me, because I did things wrong, it's, it's a little bit more intensive than I wanted it to be. But not too bad, not too bad. Come on. There we go. So now I have it sneak through the back, over there, see it? And then I'm going to feed it through here again. Yeah, so... lose track about which side is the plastic side and which side isn't, which is kind of strange, but I always seem to forget that. So I have to keep flipping this thing over because I'm like, okay, which side is the bottom and which side is the top? Okay, let's see here. I'm going to put it right... Uh, Oh, that was a fail. Oh. Okay. I'm okay. I just have to take this in steps. I'm just guessing, by the way. So this one's longer, so I think I want to make this one the tightening one. Yeah, I was actually looking at how to snake this mechanism, you guys, and I couldn't find it. But this made sense to me because I know one is one string's supposed to go one way, and then the other string's supposed to go the other way. So I figure if I have one on top and one on bottom, because see, this one is stationary over here. Let's see. Uh, if you look really closely, this was this is my deduction here. This one is stationary, so this one makes sense. Like this one cannot move because it has a pole, so this one makes sense that one goes that way and then one goes the other way, and then that allows this one to freely move. But I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. We'll see. keep doing that. I keep putting it in the wrong direction. Alright. Okay. And I want me to push this back in. And we got that freaking short string over here. And this bead 
So you can see that there was an attempt made to fix this somewhere. But it looks like this string snapped right here, if I had to guess. We'll see if this works. I can always undo it if I, I'm wrong. Yeah, those strings need to be together. What is it, Clinton? Clinton. Let's see how I do this one again. And then I have to shimmy this back in again. the fabric. I honestly did. We'll see how that is. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, I remember that cross nut not thing. Okay, let's see here. Grr, I'm just gonna shut this thing in. Okay. One. Do this. Holy crap. What do you use to do? Okay, so assuming I have it right, I don't know what was going on over here. But I just joined this string with this string and this thing with this string, and I'm hoping that it makes a difference. Okay. I gotta stand up, you guys. It's not, you guys can see, it's not even, but you know what? I'll figure that freaking thing out later. The good thing is, is that both of it retracts, and that's all I really wanted. Yeah, so, this was probably not the, the, the best repair I've ever done, for sure. But, it seems like it works. See, it tightens, and it, see, it stays. I let go of the string. And then, yeah, we'll see how that works. <laughs> we'll see how that works. But um, I'm going to hang it up, see how it is. Yeah, I got to adjust the little plastic. Really? What do you mean you adjust the little plastic thing over here? I don't know what this thing is, you know. I don't know how this thing was knotted. I've never seen this before. Like I said, in Hoi, we don't have any of these blinds. So I don't know what you do with this little knot thing. Do you guys know what this is called? What the name of this thing is? I guess you do something with it, but I don't know why there are all these little holes in it. You can get rid of it. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, if you look over here, whoops. See, that is my little 
set it up and I gotta hang this thing back up. It's gonna be fun. Oh, really? Yeah. So don't be like me. If you guys have a blind, don't be like me and just uh, start smashing plastic because I could not figure out why this thing wasn't opening. And like I said, you don't see it protruding out as much like now, but earlier, this thing was so freaking flush, I honestly thought it was one welded piece together. But learning experience, I learned something. Yeah. It's short and tight and lengthen one side. Yeah. Uneven because the strings for each other fold unevenly unless you tie. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not gonna fly out the window. Uneven because the strings are inside, which is the plastic thing done. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look that thing up about how to fix the plastic thing, but my main concern right now is hanging this stuff up and seeing how it goes. But I'm happy because it seems like I did repair it. Maybe it's not the best repair definitely isn't the most pristine repair as you can tell but I'm happy I managed to kind of figure it out yeah if only I didn't screw up that plastic but you can see this thing is like so brittle and yellow I don't know how old it is but eh, whatever I learned something from it and that's all that's important so I'm gonna uh, fix this thing, put this thing back up. Maybe I'll go stream later on. I gotta get back on the ladder. And I was honestly thinking about, you remember the other blinds that I took yesterday? If the string was too short, just um, put it through. Just um, use that string to lengthen it. Yeah, salvage what I can. And then those blinds, the parts one would go in the recycle bin because it's made out of metal. And I don't know what they're gonna do with it, but at least one goes directly in the landfill <laughs> and then the other one i was just gonna drop it off at um a free store and then if someone has a 34 inch blind they can use it but we don't have a 34 inch blind we have a 29 inch wide window yeah oh. the thing is 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 that okay so when i do this stuff i know like i should have done it earlier but i really was thinking like oh i gotta f i i didn't know how it would gonna was gonna be but I try to figure out how like one side looks like compared to the other side and then if I can't pry it open I just used brute force <laughs> not the most aesthetic yeah so I actually took this part out and then I tried shimming it out and I couldn't shimmy it out because there's a lock behind here I didn't realize this this was actually removable until I cut through the plastic and the uh, fabric when I realized what I had done, then I said, okay, let me um, unhook that little clip on the side. Remember I used a screwdriver over there and I could pull it out. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how this is. Um, I don't expect this to get used very often at all. So, um. oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna fall. I'm not gonna fall. I know I'm not gonna fall. Um, I'm pretty sturdy on this thing. And plus, it's going to look like a total ocean hazard. <laughs> it's going to look like a total ocean hazard. Because if you look at it, if you look at it really closely, let me show you guys. If you look at it really closely, you'll see that I actually, for me to put that thing up, I'm going to actually have to turn because of how it is. Yeah, so I'm going to actually have to turn. And it sucks. It sucks. I don't have that much leeway over there. I wish that I had more space to turn, but this this apartment is so um narrow in some areas so i have to shimmy my way through yeah but i'm happy that i uh seem to figure it out yeah if i i, I was thinking to myself like if worst case scenario we had to buy a new one someone had said i think it's like eight dollars for replacement i can't verify that but i wouldn't be surprised I really wish that they had this little diagram of sorts of how to do your own repair for this one. Not not the, you know, the plastic one where you can open and close the blind. I've seen that one, but I didn't see anything for this one. But it's important. I think it's really important to, if you have something that breaks, try and fix 
so don't try to repair it. And if you can't repair it, and if you can't MacGyver it or patch it up for whatever way, then of course buy a replacement. But I always like to explore the possibility of doing a repair. I learned it from when I was growing up because when I was growing up, I was surrounded around people who looked apart at, um, took apart things. For instance, um, my, my dad, I remember when I was younger, he would fiddle faddle with things. He would open things up that were broken, take a look at things and try to figure out how things work. He's not a, uh, he's not an engine thing like that, but he was, he really was curious about that sort of stuff. And then sometimes he would get parts like, like screws and just take it from there and keep it in a little container. So, and I think it's because of his can-do attitude that kind of rubbed off on me big time as I got older. I try to, you know, fix things. Even if even if I've never done it before. Yesterday was like the first time I've I've actually taken down a blind and examined it and tried to restring it. It's not that complicated. It just takes um, it's like a puzzle of sorts. This is this is definitely not like electronics repair for sure. It's, it's kind of just seeing where the string goes, feed the string through whatever mechanism is on there, and then figure it out from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I also remember um, I had an ex and his mom, um, she was from rural China, not saying anything bad about it, okay, but this is background information. I remember that she used to she used to get twine and she used to try to do all these like little itty bitty repairs. So for instance, right? Let's say a laundry basket broke, you know, one of the plastic little latch areas like this. You know how it's like a crisscross or it's like a bunch of plastic squares around? She would actually grab some twine and try to string all the little bits of plastic together so she can keep using that laundry basket. I remember thinking to myself, why would you, why would you do that? You know, why, won't, why don't you just buy a new one or something like that? But that was, that was the um, way she, she grew up as and she was encouraged to be thrifty and frugal because she came from a farming family. Um, from what I was told, and even though I kind of, you know, side-eyed it, I'm being honest here, I was thinking like, oh my goodness, just buy a new one, I think it's only like four bucks. Um, she didn't, and then I remember a while later, someone had tossed out a laundry basket um, when I was college move-outs. So I grabbed the laundry basket, I grabbed two of them, and then I gave it to her, and she she instantly upgraded. So. Um, even though it's like a small little thing like that, it just made me think like she will just repair things and just do her own little DIY repairs of sorts unless she unless she finds something else. And she was a very, very, very cheap slash frugal woman. I would err more on the side of cheap than frugal, but she saved a lot of money. And I remember she, I remember um, I, I found out how much money she had in her bank account and let's just put it this way, she could have easily retired, easily retired. I was blown away how much money this woman had in her bank account because the way she lived, it was so cheap, it was so cheap. and. I would have never ever guessed that she had so much money in the bank and it was just from her cheap way. So um, I think she was making about, I think about 30,000 a year or so when she was working and then her husband made about 30,000 a year. But even when he was in his like 60s, he was still working. Yeah, he was still working in a Chinese restaurant, doesn't speak any English, but still working. He had the option to retire. He chose not to retire because he figured if he's going to stay at home, he might as well make money. And st I mean, if he's if he's going to, you know, do nothing at home, he might as well go and work in a restaurant. So last I heard, he was still working in a restaurant for about $30,000 a year. But they are very, very close to being millionaires um, if they are not already. And yeah, they have a house, they own a house. And 
Um, it just, it just, um, it really surprised me. So it, it makes me think like if you try to be, if you try to stretch resources and make do with what you have, then, you know, your money eventually saves. And then I don't want to get too off tangent, but one of the things that kind of I, I've noticed lately is when I go out on the streets, right? Um, well, last time I was at the store, I remember I saw this one person carrying a Louis Vuitton backpack. And then a minute later, I see this woman who has a Gucci scarf. Now, the thing that struck me odd about it is this, okay? Usually when you're wearing designer things, my my outlook is you should have like the whole package. Either that or the designer item isn't gonna match. So for instance, right? If I'm wearing a regular t-shirt and basketball shorts, just imagine this, right? And then I have a Louis Vuitton backpack that says Louis Vuitton on it. It's not gonna elevate my image because although I have a Louis Vuitton backpack, the rest of me looks like an absolute bum. That's exactly how that guy looked like. He looked like a total bum. And he looked like he rolled out of bed. Nothing wrong with looking like you roll out of bed. But I'm thinking he probably bought that item to elevate his status. It didn't do anything for him. It just looked really strange. And then the woman that I was, um, that I passed by, she had a Gucci scarf. I know it was Gucci because I had the G's all over the freaking thing. And it's kind of strange because you know how I dress when I walk down the street? I wear my leggings and I wear my t-shirt. Imagine that. It's probably like $300 or so. Um, it, it doesn't add, you know what I'm saying? Like it looks out of place. You cannot just, you cannot just like have this one expensive item and then think that if you have that one expensive item, it's going to make the rest of you look expensive. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. So, and then, um, yeah, so it was kind of strange to me right now. We're in a, um, we're in that situation with the economy. You guys know what it is. I'm not going to say it out loud, but have when you have that kind of situation um in the economy i don't think it's in the best interest for a lot of people to start flashing out expensive stuff in that especially if it looks out of place expensive because i think you're setting yourself up to get mugged i honestly think that especially if you're especially if you don't if you're alone or you're walking alone it's it's not safe it's really not safe. So I would recommend that if anyone's walking out on the street, you know, don't wear expensive items. Don't carry expensive watches on you if you're walking down the street or expensive handbags because you're putting yourself at risk. There's nothing wrong with that if you own it, you know. That is your right to own it. I'm not going to I'm I'm not going to say anything about the purchase, but I think safety is really paramount right now and it kind of worries me when I see people wearing expensive items and I think, geez, if they get mugged or something, that person's going to target them. Yeah. So you guys saw my stream earlier, um, I think earlier last month or maybe it was this month where this, where this person got her Nike shoes taken off. Some people said that they think it was um, retaliation for a fight she may have gotten in earlier. But my thinking is, is they took her iPhone and they took her Nikes because it had value in it. I don't want to put myself in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Some people I know, they, they buy these expensive items because they, they, you know, they feel good having it. My stance on it is don't have your value to physical items too much because in the event that you get robbed, you don't want your self-esteem to plummet because of it. You see what I'm saying? Like if, if I had an expensive handbag and let's say it got destroyed in the rain, let's just say that, right? It got destroyed in the rain or something spilled on it. I don't want to have my day ruined because that one item is gone or it got destroyed. It's it's not worth it. And I've I've had those situations when I was younger and I put so much I put so much focus on having like designer items. I look back and I'm kind of happy I didn't buy that stuff um, too much because if I did, it's like, okay, you buy it from, you buy like $300 sunglasses, $400 sunglasses, right? And then you, you don't want to wear it anymore. And then it's sitting in your closet. I know myself very well. I'm not going to resell my, my, 
Prada sunglasses or anything like that. And if I do, most likely I'm only going to get half of it. I'm only going to get $200 back. So I'm going to take a $200 depreciation hit. And I know I didn't wear those sunglasses 200 times. That's for sure. I really think that now it's really important. Like if you want to, if you want to look classy and you don't have to take this advice from me because I'm, I'm not the classiest person dressed in my Lululemon. Don't wear brand name items. That's, that's my, that's what my belief is. I don't think it's good to have like this big, you know, LV or big Gucci or big Supreme. It just, it just looks so try hard. I, I, I think that if you have something that's fitted, that fits you well and is comfortable, that will get you much farther in terms of self-esteem than having a big Gucci um, slapped on your chest. And this is something that I've noticed too. I think people who, who are chasing status um, items and uh, chasing brand names, they're so focused on looking that looking that they're rich that they don't spend really the time to try and grow it you see what i'm saying like there's a difference between spending your money to look a certain way to impress people right i know this sounds very like um fight club right you you work to spend to make money to impress people that you, you don't know or you don't even care about but it's more important especially now instead of spending money on unnecessary items try and grow your money if you can um i think it's i think that i wish that was pushed on more rather than designer stuff because designer stuff very 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 few things will appreciate in price i have not come across a designer item that is immortal you know, how would i say like most people can afford it that somehow it um, appreciates over time Unless you have like some kind of limited edition item and then you held on to it for about 10 years or so. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, I, I had a, um, an ex who really liked having the big brand name items on their shirt. And I said, well, why don't you just wear Coca-Cola on your shirt? If you're going to be wearing this big, I think you wore Lonvin or something like that. L-A-N-V-I-N. I, I told him, I said, if you're going to be wearing this big ass name, you might as well put Coca-Cola on there. And he was like, it's not the same, Erica. It's not the same. Yeah. One of my exes, he, um, he, he bought himself like a BMW and he, I mean, like it's his baby and everything. And I, I was thinking to myself, geez, when I was dating him, he was so frugal and, um, he was so frugal and mindful of his, you know, he makes good amount of money, um, but he, he just like, he says, you don't, uh, you don't buy these sneakers. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't keep up with designer stuff. Like what kind of person do you take me up to be to know, you know, spring, summer season, spring, fall season designer. Yeah. He got into it. And um, yeah, I, I just wish that instead of, spending his money on designer items and like fifty thousand dollars on a pop sometimes it's like get something that grows in value i mean i would be happier if he just bought like a hunk of gold you know fifty thousand dollars worth of, worth of gold and just had it sitting in a safety deposit box because a car i mean especially in hawaii he lives in town so his car commute is only about 15 minutes that's if he goes out and he only goes out maybe three four times a week that's it yeah <laughs> okay ga okay you said if you're gonna spend money buy a good watch here's the thing okay so i had a another ex and he really liked having his his designer watches he has like breitlings rolexes panerai i think it's that's what's called panerai i can't remember the name of it and he was really big on his watches but the thing is is that he spent so much money on his watches and he didn't spend good money on his food and that was the thing that really surprised me because i think if i had to put if i had to put a focus on what's more important eating good food or having good watches i would say taking care of one's health is more important
And then when he did wear the watch, I remember he was telling me, he said something like, there was this other guy that he came across, and this guy, he, he was showing off, he was telling people in a club that he had a $400, like, Michael Kors watch, $400 watch, and he was trying to show it off to all these people in the club that he had a $400 watch. And then my ex said that he had, like, a, um, a Rolex, and, but he didn't feel the need to to show off their watch and then you could tell because it, it looks like got an itchy wrist you know what i'm talking about it's very very strange it's very strange but um yeah i i've known a a number of guys they they like their breitlings or they like their rolexes and uh, i don't know it's very it's very strange to me i guess watches are maybe like the equivalent of diamonds to a woman i'm not too sure Yeah, Toyota's a great car, actually. I really like, um, I have a Toyota Corolla in Hawaii, a 2001. I named it Milton. I really like that car. <laughs> it's, um, it's an older car, but it has charm to it. And I know, I can honestly say that car was paid off, I think it was like $2,900 or so. And it makes me, it makes me kind of... It makes me kind of scratch my head when I see some people and they're in a rush to get like an expensive car and then they have all these expensive payments and then they struggle to make their payments but they want to tell people like look how expensive my car is look at my you know look at look how great my car is it just it just makes me shake my head Yeah I don't I don't um I wouldn't get any of those old, um, those expensive watches because I have a, a to, to be honest with you guys, I have a hard time reading a, a traditional clock. You know what I'm talking about? You know how they have the clocks that, um, not, not digital, I guess that's analog. Yeah, the expensive watches. Yeah, I, I don't like looking at those kind of watches. I'm so used to just flicking out my phone and looking at the time that way, so I I don't think I'd be getting any classier with having a watch. And if I did have a watch, I'd probably have the wrong time because I wouldn't be keeping up the time. I wouldn't be manually um, winding it up or something. Now, Volkswagen is not a durable car from what I've heard. That's what I've heard. So, yeah, and now I think especially now... Luxury watches are dying, for sure. For sure it's dying. I was also coming across an article. Um, I came across like a thing on YouTube today, and they were saying that a lot of stores are hit hard, especially tailor and dry cleaning stores, because of you know the situation with the economy. People are not really working, so there's really no sense to dry clean clothes. And I kind of I kind of chuckled because I thought, yeah, that's right. I haven't really had much of a desire to buy any new clothes. Um, ever since this stuff happened with, uh, you know, the economy. And if people are working from home, why would they want to buy a new suit or anything like that, you know? Like, there's really no sense. And people are leaving New York, as I mentioned to you guys earlier. A lot of people are throwing things away. Um, they're getting rid of furniture um, because they're moving. Yeah. And I think evictions is starting soon, if I remember correctly. I'm not too, I'm not too sure when it, when it, exactly it starts. But people are moving out of New York, and I can see it. Good glasses. What do you mean, good glasses? Do you mean by eyeglasses, or do you mean drinking glasses?
Because if you're talking about drinking glasses, a, a cup is a cup. You know? I usually drink from a mason jar. I remember um, when I was in Hawaii, I used to get told like, oh my goodness, why are you drinking? Why are you drinking from a mason jar? And I said, well, I kind of I kind of like it. You know, it was like the hip thing to do. You know what I'm talking about? And then all of a sudden people are drinking from glass jars. But my neighbor in Hawaii, she's been drinking out of glass jars even before the mason jar thing happened. And she is one of the most frugal people I know. And she really is an inspiration because I see how she lives. I thought, man, I want to I want to live you know like she does in hawaii a lot of people you have to be very frugal if you're not very frugal you, you it will hurt you it will only hurt you so i think white people overall um especially like older generations if they're around their 40s 50s 60s they're very very they can they're really good with um money and also these people that i know that are that tend to be super frugal in Hawaii that I grew up around. They also tend to buy um, stocks, so they have these like long-term investments. That's one of the reasons why I have a um, a little portfolio of sorts. I sold Win today. I got pissed off because every time I look at Win, you know, Win the casino, W Y N N. It irked me because I think it went like 40, it went down 42% since I bought it. So I was thinking to myself, frick it, I'm just going to sell it. So I sold it today and I'm probably going to put it into something else. I'm not too sure. And then talking about stocks, earnings for Amazon is tomorrow. I don't know how that's going to go, but we will see. We will see how it goes. And I think, I think Apple is tomorrow too, if I remember correctly, but I might be remembering wrong right now, but I haven't been keeping up with it. It got delayed an hour. And then after it got delayed, I was like, screw it. I'm going to do something else. Oh, yeah. I have one of those Anja, those, um, I bought one of those things. It's really nice. It's really nice to have. And then also it doesn't stain inside versus like a coffee cup, coffee cups. Oh my goodness. It gets stained so much. Yeah. Alex, you bring up a good point. What's going to happen? People think like Lewis was saying that when evictions happen, he thinks housing is going to tank down. I think housing might go down 20 cents might okay that is a might but depend it, it will not go down 50 percent it will not go down 75 percent and people who are who did buy up property in like 2008 and multi-millionaires or billionaires you know they're gonna do the same thing you know they're just gonna buy property hold on to it and then when it goes up then try to sell it or rent it out to people yeah so those those people who have like lots of money they're not going to be screwed by this if if housing goes down in fact they'll just see it as a buying opportunity but i worry about the people who did buy houses thinking it would be an investment opportunity so for instance right let's say you buy a um a two-family house you cannot afford for six thousand dollar mortgage so you're assuming that if you have a renter who pays you two thousand dollars a month they're gonna help you pay off your mortgage let's just say that right if you don't have a renter or they sh they shaft you then your house can potentially go into eviction depending on how long you're in arrears for so it's um it's kind of it's kind of um worrisome to me because i remember for like a number of years people were saying things like yeah buy a house and then do house hacking and if you do that then you'll have someone pay your mortgage for you or offset a good and i i think you know they're lucky because their tenant can make the payments but goodness you know can you imagine having a house and then you can if you can't make the mortgage payment yourself and you're relying on your tenant and then your tenant shafts you yikes Yikes. I think they call it a house of possible crumbling cards, depending on where you're at. 
And New York, from what I've heard, it's it's tough for people to kick um, tenants out for whatever reason, especially now. You know, a lot of things is backed up, and when things are backed up, you got to... When things are backed up, you know, you got tenants who are going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to just stay here for three to four months until you get the courts to evict me. Yeah, and I'm not going to pay you. Kind of sucks. Couch surfing. And a couch surfing only, I imagine, only would work for so long. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. I remember, um, oh, Oreo, get off that thing. That thing is so dirty. Come on, move. Get off there. Get off there. You're a white cat, Oreo. This thing will show even more. You know, him and his little white paws. Go. Go off somewhere else, Oreo. Yeah. Look at this guy. Oreo. Oreo, you want to say hello? Look at that guy. I shoot him over again. Oreo. He mad. <laughs> He's like, you shooed me. You shooed me. Ah, uh, Clinton. Yeah, I get his back. Yep. He's giving me the back. The B-A-C-K. He was not happy being shooed away from that dirty, that dirty, uh, Hello? Clinton. Clinton. Hello, Clinton. You're very handsome. Look at that. Grudge McGrudge over there. Oh, yeah. Do you want to hold a grudge at me? Yeah, he actually holds grudges. So you thought first why Oriole's holding a little grudge at me. He wanted to go on the blind. I shoot him away. And this is what I get. Really? You emailed me? I gotta check my email. You know, I don't check my I don't check my email. I very rarely check it because it it doesn't automatically open when I um, turn on my computer. So there have been times I haven't checked my email for like a month or two. <laughs> yeah. Well, what can I say? He he does hold his grudges. Oh, yeah, I check it. And then this is my little carrying case over here. See that? That's where I keep my tools. I'm going to be honest, I didn't come up with this idea myself. So someone um, was throwing this thing out. And I thought to myself, oh, well, it's an organizer of sorts. I wonder if I could put mail in here. It didn't fit in. And then I asked Lewis, hey, can, can you see, do you have a use for this? And then he said, oh, you could put tools in there. And I thought, oh. You're right, I could put tools. So previously I had all these tools inside of a, a plastic bag. I know, so, so, so high class over here. And now I have it inside of this little carrier. So I was really happy about it. We do have a dishwasher. We do have a dishwasher. Um, I don't really use a dishwasher because I like doing the, the dishes immediately after. Yeah, I don't like having it sit around. And then we go through so few dishes a day. I think it's such a waste to just be running the dishwasher so constantly. So after I eat, like I'll have like one plate, one one utensil or so. 
I'll just wash it and then put it in the dishwasher to air dry. Oh no, I don't, um, I just, um, disinfect it. Did you know technically Oreo was from the streets and Oreo can't go in the dishwasher? Oreo was a stray. He's so cute, but he won't eat he'll grudge at me. But I have not seen any stray cats nearly as friendly as Oreo. Look at that, he's cleaning himself. Oreo, do you want to face over here? You got 19 people who would love to see you groom. Yeah. He's been a little bit more active ever since I've been giving him the 100% um, wet food. But I like, um, I just like hand washing it. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Clinton, get away from there. Move, move. I gotta hang these things up soon. All prior to clean is always his front paws and his face. Never really the rest of him. But he prioritizes the front paws and the face the most. Yeah, I don't know about Oreo. He just... He's looking a little chonky lately. Even though I've been trying to keep him on a diet. He's been resisting me big time. What? Oh, you heard that I was talking about you, Oreo? Oh. Oreo, come here. Come on. Stop holding a grudge. Come on now. No, he's gonna hold his grudge. Oreo. Oreo. I know Jackson Galaxy would say if you, if uh, if a cat if you call out a cat once and it doesn't come to you, don't expect it to come to you twice. Like he knows he knows I'm calling his name, but look at that guy. He's just ignoring me. Uh oh. Where's he going? Oh, he's going in his uh, paper bag area. Come here, Tup Tup. Come here. Come here, my handsome. Oh, come here. I know, I know you, baby. Don't hold a grudge, Oreo. It's not good. You know, if you hold a grudge, you're gonna hold all these bad, these bad energy inside of you. You're probably just gonna keep that weight on. If you let it go, maybe you'll be skinnier and healthier. And then that won't tell me that you're a little overweight. <laughs> what? I know, I know, Oreo. He's a big crybaby. He really is. Come uh, here. Okay. He makes all these, like, little cries. Oh, you guys want to see George? Okay, I'll show you guys George. Actually, I added things to... Let's see here. Yoot. Okay, look at this. So I added some new plants here. This one... Someone was, you know when I got the shoe rack? Someone was, um, they were getting rid of this. And then I thought, oh, okay, I'll rehome it. So I have this guy. I think it's a Ray Dunn, but I'm not too sure. And then that's a plant that I rehomed a while back. And then this is Wonderful George. And then this is a dying plant that I just took in last week or so. Yeah. So he's looking pretty good. Yeah. He's a little short. I don't know. He looks a little short to me. I want to get him a new home soon. Because I think he's going to out... Um, he's going to be too big for this thing, eventually. But he looks pretty good. And I have to thank you guys. You guys were telling me like, I overwatered him initially. Yeah. 
So this guy, he got sun damage. I had him outside on the fire escape for the longest time. Not anymore. No, I just um, sprinkle a little water and then I put my, I try to feel in like, um, like about two inches deep to see if the dirt is moist. And if it is moist, then I won't rewater anymore. So your tips really, really help. This guy got damaged by the sun. Yeah, it got a, it took a beating because it's been so freaking hot. It burned the leaves. See it? Oh well, it's okay. It is okay. So I got that guy, and then I also got my little guy over here, which I just watered today. See him? He looks a little bigger. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm pretty happy about it. So I have some plants around the house. And all my plants are rehomed. So I, um, these are plants that people were moving or they discarded. And I thought to myself, I might as well, um, I might as well rehome them. Because if people aren't going to take the plants and I wanted plants anyway, I don't want people, I don't want, you know what I'm saying? Like, I... If I'm gonna buy a plant, I might as well just rehome a plant because if I don't take that plant, most likely it's just gonna end up in the landfill or um, just die from lack of water. I feel the same about animals, you know? Adopt, don't shop. Some people, they like having designer brands of cats. For me, I've taken a huge liking to tuxedo cats. Pretty obvious, my favorite cat is a tuxedo cat. <laughs> I always think to myself whenever I see um, like stories or um, issues about cats having sensitive tummies, I always see at least one tuxedo cat in that photo. Like my cat was having diarrhea issues and then I gave my cat this probiotic and it worked out wonderfully. So I don't know if, I don't know if tuxedo cats tend to be more sensitive in the tummy area. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but yeah. I really like tuxedo cats because I think they're very sweet as well sweet, cuddly, but warning, can hold grudge. Can hold a grudge. Oreo, are you going to keep holding a grudge to me? No? 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 Oh, look at you. This guy. Oh, hello, Kalina. What I really want to do is I really want to get a plant stand. Yeah, this is the dying one. It looked like this when I got it. I have no idea what kind of plant it is. I have a thing for taking really dying plants. I guess I figure that if they're dying, then they probably, you know, I want to give them like a last shot. I probably will name this plant, but I don't know what I'm going to name it. And I have no idea what kind of plant this is. But whatever it is, I hope it grows. It looks very limpy now. I know. Yeah. So, the person that I grabbed the shoe rack from, you guys can see it over there. See the shoe rack? Look at that beautiful shoe rack over there. Um, they had like a whole bunch of plants. And they had some plants that I really, really wanted to get. However, they were in glass um, vases or so, and in really tall ones. And I didn't want to bring the glass because I thought to myself, you know, if the cats knock things over, I'd rather have them knock over plastic or ceramic versus glass. Because, you know, you drop glass, it's terrible. It's terrible to clean up glass. We've actually, um, I've, um, dropped like a soda bottle once, like a glass root beer bottle. It was it was terrible. <laughs> the cleanup is terrible. So I don't like having glass for um, planters. I, I wouldn't mind having like terracotta or ceramic. Or um, on the bottom of the list is definitely plastic, but I don't like having glass. Yeah, I'm gonna be on the lookout though for a bigger pot for George because I think George is gonna need a bigger pot eventually and I might as well just bolo on the lookout. Hello there. 
so we'll see. We'll see about that. But I like having my little plants, and I have one, two, one, two. I think I have five plants here. Clay bar. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I know the cats can vet visit. A very, very expensive vet visit. Okay, I, you know what, Jan? I will check my email after I'm done streaming. How's that? And I don't know if this is, this, I think this is the same one as the dying plant. See that? There's actually, I think it's called Ray Dunn, R-A-E-D-U-N-N. -N. I wasn't too sure if this was a Ray Dunn plant or if this was just the generic one. Or like, I think it, I don't know if it's real or not, but it's engraved. So this is supposed to be like kind of trendy. And Lewis was making fun of me because he said, Erica, no wonder why nobody wanted to take the plant. It's just like a plant. And I said, yeah, I don't know what plant it is, but that's kind of like the... That's the beauty of it, you know? You don't know what it is, and then you'll see what it grows out to be, and who knows? So it's the plant that could. I think it's cute. the street all these people are moving out it's kind of it kind of makes me sad in one sense i'm happy because yeah i heard about that one but you're talking about the seeds from china right yeah in one sense it kind of makes me kind of happy because i think to myself well if someone gets rid of something could use it then that's great a lot of people where we live they'll actually put stuff out in front of their apartments or in front of their houses and it's on the sidewalk and you can just feel free to take it yeah so it's really nice and that's something that i don't really see in hawaii like people if they're if they have stuff that they don't use they'll just most likely just go to savers or go to goodwill or um a charity place and drop it off directly they won't just have it lying in a cardboard box in front of their place that says free I'm a big supporter of that, though. That's one of the things I love so much about New York. It's a very eco-friendly kind of thing. And I remember when I was volunteering, I overheard this one girl. She was talking about she wanted a face shield. And I, when I overheard her, I said, oh, do you want a face shield? Like, I have a few of them, and you can have it. And then I met up with her, like, the next time we were volunteering, and I gave it to her, and she was so happy about it. Yeah. So it's a nice, it's a nice community feel to it. Like I feel a lot of people are eco-friendly and they're mindful of the environment and there's a lot of sharing going on. So I, you might've seen my previous streams. I was sharing like community fridges. The whole idea behind a community fridge is if stores have things that are going bad or they have to get rid of it for whatever reason, some of this stuff, by the way, some of this stuff is just, it's expiring. Okay, so for instance, right? So yesterday I dropped off something to um, this community free store of sorts and then I saw this, and if you look at it, it's basil. So they have these community food fridges, and you can feel free to drop off food or pick up or whatever. And it's kind of nice. But so my thinking is, is that most likely this basil, they couldn't sell it in a grocery store. So instead of throwing it in a landfill, they said, let's give it to um, a community fridge or let's give it to a food pantry. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think I'm probably going to dry it and see where that goes. I've been drying some mint leaves for tea. But yeah, there's like nothing wrong with it. I think we have so much food waste. 
um, and so much stuff going on to the landfill and it really makes me happy when I see people come together and they're donating stuff or donating their time or um, businesses or um, grocery stores or they're they're trying to um, prevent stuff from going straight into the landfill and I fully support this kind of stuff you might have seen my stream yesterday where I was talking about volunteering at one of those um, um, I have not looked at the Facebook marketplace for free stuff but I am I am part of a buy nothing group so if you guys are on Facebook I would highly recommend join a buy nothing group you know, buy nothing BUI space nothing buy nothing like buy nothing Oahu or buy nothing New York or something like that or buy nothing you know whatever your city name is and what I find is is that when people when people are moving out or if they don't want it something they'll say hey um i'm trying to clear out space does anyone want this so yesterday for instance when i woke up i um i saw a notification and someone had posted that they were giving away a ps2 and a gamecube with the games too and people were going crazy over it. And I could have messaged the guy and told him, hey, you know, I'll take the GameCube if you don't want it. But I decided, nah, we don't even game. I don't need it. But, you know, it's things like that. Like, you, people post things, they give it away for free, and they don't expect any payment in return. It's just, it's, it's this nice kind of, like, community sharing thing. I also see people where people say things along the lines of, I need a hand truck because I'm going to be moving or a dolly. Can I borrow one from, from someone between, you know, the hours of noon to 2 p.m. on Friday? And people will say, I have a hand truck. You can borrow it. And it, it's a really nice thing. It's really nice. I like seeing the community come together. And I think we need to have more of that kind of thing. And it's, I, I see a lot, especially in this community in Brooklyn, I wish that I would see more of this kind of stuff in Hawaii. It's um, it, it's a really nice neighborhood. Lewis will tell you things like he doesn't think the neighborhood is that great, but I've gone to the, you know, I, I volunteer my time at two different events. I see people. Um, I, I try to get involved with the community. And I think this is a really nice community. Um, people are very... You know, overall, people are nice. They're giving. They're mindful for the environment. There are some people um, who who do get drunk on the streets. Like there's there's this one place in particular that's very close to where we live. Typically, the people would just drink in front of their house and just kind of curse at each other. But those go, those come down to the individuals, right? In in any community, you always have those individuals who are kind of not the best. Um, or they they might be you know one of the drunk people out there, but you know it, it, I cannot let those people represent the whole community, especially when I see so many other people who tell me, you know who prove to me otherwise that it's not like that. So I don't feel unsafe in this community. I don't think this is a bad neighborhood at all. In fact, I really like living here. Yeah, Kalina, um, I agree. I think that it's it's really good to just put in, put things in a box or put things over your railing and write free on it. I used to I used to donate a lot of stuff to Goodwill or Savers, but the problem that I found out is you can look this up too if you don't believe me. People, um, organizations that collect uh, clothes and stuff. If they can't sell it or if they don't have room to sell it, they're going to just ship it off to a third world country. And it's not like they give it away for free either. It's like they sell the, the stuff in bulk weight to people in a third world country. And then from there, the people in the third world country will try to make some money off of it. And it's actually not good because the thing about that is when you have, let's say, for instance, like Tom Shoes, if you guys heard about that. You guys ever heard about Tom Shoes? You know, the buy one, get one sneaker thing, the canvas shoes. So a lot of people were buying that stuff because they thought, hey, I want to help out the poor community, you know, in, in um, third world countries. The issue is, is when people 
who live in that community, they rather just have the Tom shoes rather than support their local shoemakers. And it kind of disrupts the economy in a sense, depending how many shoes get thrown over there. So I think that um, if you do want to give away something for free, be it clothes, board games, books, it's best you give it directly to the community to take from rather than giving it to an organization and then there's a possibility it'll go in the landfill or it will go um get shipped overseas yeah so i think if you help people out it's best to help the community directly i don't i don't i you know if i donate something i want people directly to take it i don't want to think about hey if nobody takes it it'll go straight into the landfill or if you you know, if, if Goodwill has like 500 other shirts, they're not going to post my shirt up on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, local shops and local businesses are good to support, but I do admit that depending on how expensive that local business is, you just don't want to support them. So for instance, there are some stores over here that are listed as eco-friendly and they might sell something like double the price that Amazon pays. And the reason why they sell it so expensive is because, you know, they have to make a mark and they have to make profit off of it. So they're not going to sell it for as cheap as Amazon sells it. Yeah. But I highly suggest that you guys um, join a buy nothing group on Facebook. Just type in like buy nothing and then include your state or your town. You'll find it. And if you want to borrow something or if you want to buy something, I know someone had mentioned that. Oh, my goodness. Or um, I know someone had mentioned something along the lines of their husband wanted to buy a jump rope, like a $50 jump rope. And then they asked the people in the buy nothing group. Hey, is there, you know, is anyone giving away a jump rope or so? Is anyone not using a jump rope? And then someone came out and said, hey, I have a jump rope. You can have it if you want it. And it was just collecting dust. So it's good. You know, it's, it's good. Like if people have a use for certain items and you're not using it, just pass it forward. Yeah, I don't believe too much in buying like fast fashion stuff because fast fashion, it's like the trendy stuff. It's cute, but after a season or two seasons, you look at it and you're like, frick, I don't want it anymore. Or, I used to buy like clothes from uh, Forever 21 when I was younger. I found out that their clothes, even though I, I wash it in cold water and I air dry, it would shrink. So the clothes would shrink on me and it was just terrible because I feel like I was throwing my money away. That's why I don't like a lot of fast fashion stuff. I don't like I, I don't mind buying things from Uniqlo. I have a few staples from there, but typically I want to buy clothes that I feel will last a while or they're basics because you can kind of dress it up or dress it down depending on what else you wear with it. Not any of this, you know, trendy kind of bohemian sort of thingy majingy that's just trendy for a little bit and you know like those um what would be you remember like those von dutch hats back in 2000s remember those yeah nobody wears a von dutch hat anymore like imagine all the von dutch hats in a landfill now yeah uniqlo is um much better it, it fits me much better than h&m but I like H&M and I like Uniqlo, but I'll go to Uniqlo more often because Uniqlo, I find more stores there. Yeah. I agree. Especially with this situation and the economy going on, I think it's important that people have um, really good basics and stock up on that because you can wear it in your, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 
certain pieces will never go out of style. Look at that cat. You can see Oriole's day. He's just very tired. He's going to take a cat nap. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see people who are trying to stretch out resources even more. And I, you know, I know that some people would say that the stuff that's going on is really destructive for the economy. People aren't spending as much money as before. But I think it's a good thing. And the reason why I think it's a good thing is, is I think we have a lot of environmental waste and people are going to be more cognizant about what they're spending and they're going to try and stretch the life of um, certain items or um, even more. I remember reading that people were growing, you know, green onions, regrowing green onions. When this pandemic was hitting as an attempt to save money. And it kind of made me laugh because um, around the time the pandemic hit, I decided to start growing green onions. <laughs> And it, it was because that I started using green onions and I thought to myself, I don't want to go out and buy a, you know, a pack of green onions every couple of weeks when I use so little of it. I just regrow it and then if I have some water, I'll just um, use it then. Yeah, it's not overdoing it. I think it's like 70 degrees right now. I think about the environmental waste. That's a really big thing. And I also do believe, though, that if people shift to stretching things out longer for whatever reason, we're going to see higher, maybe we'll see higher quality stuff. Maybe we'll see um, people shift into producing more eco-friendly or environmentally friendly stuff. Yeah, but um, it's it's really I this this whole um, situation with the economy. It's really made me kind of hyper focus on what can we use, what can we do without, um, and you know how can. How, you know, can we declutter certain things and then donate it? And I think if this this thing didn't happen, we wouldn't see such certain things like community fridges popping around. We wouldn't have people um, volunteering as much or being more, um, more involved with the community. So I'm pretty happy about it, you know? I think that, um, I think that, I feel like at least in this community where we live, people are closer. Yeah, we don't have space to grow green chilies and peppers. I used to, I grew um, Thai chilies in Hawaii. Man, that thing was so freaking hot. I didn't want to eat them. <laughs> they were way too hot. It went straight to burn in my mouth. It was, it was really, really spicy.
Yeah, we don't have a, we don't have a um, yard here, so I can't grow any of that stuff here. I kind of wish I could. Like, if we had a yard, I would want to grow a bunch of vegetables and some um, fruit trees. I think that would be really nice. But we don't have any of that stuff. <laughs> we don't have an alarm system. We have three cats, and that's an alarm system. Although I don't think Oreo's a really good alarm system because he tends to nuzzle people. That is true. You do eat less when it's spicy, when it's more spicy. But then you also drink more liquids. Like you drink more milk or you drink more water. Yeah, I'm not too sure about getting a planter. The reason being is that we try to keep the window closed most of the time. So I'm not... I'm not seeing a planter coming out. Some people, they put stuff on their fire escape. They put plants on their fire escape and then you just go out and water your plants on the fire escape. I kind of want to get one more plant, but I want to get a plant with, um, I want to get a plant with a plant stand. You know, one of those big leafy ones and then it has a plant stand that kind of um, makes it like two feet higher. I want to put one right next to the fireplace where Lewis um, has a couch. And I think if I had a plant like that, that would be really, really nice. Yeah, I don't really have a space to hang. Oh, actually, I could hang a vertical basket on the curtains, maybe. Maybe. Oh, that might be a good idea. Yeah. I could actually just, um, I could actually put something vertically look at this i gotta make the bed look at that i could actually put something vertically on that one over there that one maybe maybe yeah i don't know about succulents and cacti i kind of like having um regular leafy plants there are community gardens in our community. However, I don't like, I don't want to grow anything in a community garden and check up on it every day. Um, I rather have it right outside versus, you know, walking two, three blocks for it. So we'll see, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, our bed is very lazy bed making. It's um fitted sheet with regular sheet and duvet and then two blankets on top. It's always the same thing. And we have like multiples of the same white sheets because of this cat. But you know what? He hasn't had a pooping issue. So I feel like, you know, the, the four sets of bed sheets that we have, yeah, we don't go through them all as quickly as we used to. So I'm really happy about that. I always get my daily walk. I always get my daily walk. I have my 10 minute wellness walk. By the way, where you guys live, do you see people moving out? Because I've been noticing, yeah, people are moving out. Wow, 2 p.m. all normal shops closed shop. Dang. Manny, where are you? Where, where are you located? Are you, are you in the U.S. 
Or are you outside of the U.S.? Oh, India. Wow. Oh, I'm nice. PPM is so early. I hope you and your family are safe. I can understand why they're doing that 2 p.m. lockdown then. If they, um, if it's the second worst in the whole country. Isopropyl alcohol. Uh, what's the most What's the most infested state in the U.S., Kalina? I lost track because there's like a whole bunch of them. Oh, California. Yeah, I heard it was, what was it? I think Florida, and then California, or and then, I forgot. It's like I lose track of these states, because it just seems like so much. And then I'm hearing about all these, like, um, outbreaks and record breaking. It's, it turns into a mishmash of stuff. Okay, Florida. Wow. Uh, Stay safe, stay indoors, social distance, wear the mask. I know some people are against wearing masks, but if you if the situation is that bad, especially where you live, I really hope that people wear their mask. And I think it should also be spun as if people are, you know, they lost their job because of this stuff, then they should even be more on board with everybody wearing a mask. Because the more people that wear a mask, right, the, the faster, hopefully, things go back to relative normal. Yeah. I don't want it to get into... What? Ban the whole state? What? Am I reading that right? You ban the whole state from wearing masks? What's the point of that? CC says to wear a mask. I think the consensus is to wear a mask, not to not wear a mask. Ay. Oh, how is George Black doing? Here he is. Look at that little guy. Remember that? Remember when I was uh, did the George stream? People were saying things like, "Oh, you know, the plan is a goner," and I said, "No, I think the plan's gonna be okay." Look, he looks great. And like I told you guys, I've said this uh, many times. 
without your guidance, I know that this plant wouldn't have um, came back. So I'm really, really thankful for it. There's a lot of things that I don't know. So when you guys tell me and give me suggestions, it really helps me out a lot. So you can see that there's a shoot gonna grow over there. And yeah, I think he's good. And then when I can, I'm going to um, repot him on a bigger plant. But I want to I want to find a pot on the street. Yeah. I've been on this whole thing where a lot of people are moving. So if I see a big planter of sorts, and hopefully it's ceramic, hopefully ceramic, we'll see. Um, I'm going to move him into a bigger planter. Yeah, I disinfect it and I spray it down. Some of the stuff like I see people getting rid of, I see things like um, like solid wood dressers. I see things like really nice tables, really nice headboards. I thought to myself, man, if only we lived in a house, I could redecorate a whole place. <laughs> yeah. There, there, um, one thing about New York that I realized is that a lot of people, in my opinion, they some people they just get rid of like so many stuff it's crazy like it's a i think it's definitely land of fast fashion here but it's also nice when they're being environmentally conscious and they say hey you know put a little sign on it free please take that kind of stuff protest <laughs> I've seen on Reddit people wearing masks and then they, you know, like the, the blue face mask and they'll actually poke holes in it. Yeah, I, w I was like cringing. See ya, Kalina. Take care. Stay safe. Yeah, I'd rather have people wear a mask than no mask for sure. I don't see the downside of wearing a mask. Yeah, be positive. I think it's important that people keep upbeat during this time. I don't really mind. I don't really mind um, staying indoors for long periods of time because I've always been a homebody. I think that's why I have such a uh, fixation on fixing things around the house because um, I think that a person's place should be a place that they actually really like being in. And this apartment, it is not the biggest apartment. You guys, you guys have heard what I've been saying about it. Like it, because it's one big room, Everything we have is all in one room. So, um, almost everything except the kitchen, right? So, the laundry is done over here. The cats are fed here. The bed is over here. Litter box is over here. Couches are over here. Yeah. I wish we had like separate rooms and that way one could be for laundry and then one could be, you know, for exercise. That would be nice. That would be really nice. But it is what it is, and if that's how, you know, if that's how apartments are, here are, then it's fine. But it definitely is a challenge because, like, um, storage space here, everything we have, it's like you can see everything because there is no other room to put stuff in. And that's my number one complaint about this. Some of you guys, I know you guys have garages or basements. I wish we had that. We don't have that over here. So everything that we have is just like out and about or it's on a shelf. Or as you guys might remember, my beautiful plushies, my beautiful plushies have to go in trash bags because they have no place to put it. Yeah, all my little plushies. I had to move my plushies. I got tired of seeing my plushies around, so I moved it. <laughs> yeah, so... 
Anyway, I gotta go eat lunch. I just realized I haven't eaten lunch yet. So I'm gonna eat lunch. I'm gonna hang up the thing and see how it goes. So I will talk to you guys later. Um, I hope you guys stay safe. And I might do a stream later today. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll talk to you later, guys. Take care.